Welcome to Teaching Brood. In today's episode, we're going to talk about something that is a little bit scary for some teachers. Yep, we're going to talk about how to bring technology to your students. We're talking about beginning of the year, middle of the year, depending on when you are ready to do it. But we are going to talk about how to, some kind of best practices that you can use to bring, uh, to bring it to your students. Apologize right away if I sound a bit nasally. I've got a bit of a head cold. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is establish some routine. In yeah. fact, like it's not a free-for-all. Everybody runs for the laptop cabinet. No, um, you, you should have a pretty systematic way of getting your laptops or your iPads out. Um, my students have numbers in the room. Uh, I have 22 students, so 1 and 22. Um, the, iPads and, uh, the iPads are labeled 1 to 22. The computers are labeled 1 to 22. They know that there's a system to go get it. The iPads are done two at a time because of the, because, because of the baskets that they're in. The MacBooks are done one at a time simply because that's the way they're set up. But have an efficient and fluid way. They'll never get all 22 out at once. So have patience with that. And then the other thing you want to do before you really get into doing anything with your subject and apps and stuff like that, you need to have a good basis of digital citizenship. Absolutely. Two of the most common parts of digital citizenship these days are Interlan, which is used to a heavy degree by schools around the world that want to kind of gamify digital citizenship. It only came out in June of 2017. And it focuses more on the idea of gaming your way through digital citizenship lessons. I tried it out with my class this past year, and it, they seem to have retained most of it, which means I can see the value in it. A mm -hmm. lot of digital citizenship lessons can be a bit dry. Yes. Done. So this app creates a way that they can actively be engaged with the uh, digital citizenship. But where a lot of digital citizenship lessons are done in like a one big hour block, I find Interland worked better in like 20 minute increments. So, so this is also a good time to be collaborating with other classes, mm -hmm. with other teachers, with the counseling department, with the tech coach. This is the time that your classroom might be a revolving door. Oh yeah, totally. Um, you may want to bring the counselor in for the first couple of lessons, or you may want to do a trifecta where you have the technology coach you and the counselor in, in in the room at the same time and kind of going over some digital citizenship best practices. The grade level will often, often change it too, I find. Like, my, um, my kids knew a few things, but not really much. Fifth graders tend to know a lot more. Middle schoolers tend to know, they tend to know a bit more. Whether they practice those things is a different thing. Yeah, I was going to say, do they actually practice them? Yeah. That's, um, that's middle schoolers being middle schoolers, though, I mean, that is one of those brain things. They often know things and can't follow through with them. Yep, but I mean, you've got to hope for the best and it's your job to kind of keep it consistent in your classroom, mm -hmm. keep constant reminders. Once the digital citizenship lessons are over, doesn't mean that it's done. This is true. This is something you're going to come back to many, many times over the course of the year. Yeah, have posters in your room, have um, ways of reminding them throughout the year. You know, if you see someone make a mistake, don't point out their mistake. I kind of address it as a whole class issue. Yeah. So keep it consistent throughout your year. Now, once you've got a good basis of digital citizenship, then you need to give time to the students to explore things. Absolutely. You want to make sure that they can get in and have a go and have a play on it. Otherwise, they're never going to be able to focus on what you're wanting them to do. Yeah, exactly. The first time you take out those computers or MacBooks or iPads or whatever you've got, you definitely want to give them a trim and half an hour just to kind of pick and poke through it. Let them find their finder version application. We've got uh, PCs. It's going to be Explorer, I think. Sorry. I think so. I, yeah, I haven't used Windows in a while. And if you've got um, Chromebooks, give them a chance to get on Chrome. Try and play with what some of the apps that, that it's got. Try and figure out how to, how to move through things. Change the wallpaper because... Lord knows they're going to want to later. Um, oh, yeah. Usually in the middle of something else that's really important and needs to be done now. Oh, absolutely. Um, so to give them a chance to kind of do that for about 20 minutes, half hour, just kind of get those wiggles out and then start bringing them on task. Yes. And the first thing I try to do with them is just simply get them to log in and log out. Yeah. Log into Gmail. Log out. Log into your math program. 
log out. Like I, we use ten marks at our school. Um, log into anything that you've got assigned and required on it. So you have to log in and log out. And I'm used to that idea of what it means to log in and log out. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing is if you've got kids that are very tentative and they're not, um, they're not wanting to explore as much, set out some challenges. I need yeah. somebody to figure out how to do this task. I need somebody else to figure out how to do that task. And if you set them down in pairs, you've got two people working together trying to figure out how to do that particular task, that's going to allow them to be a little bit more comfortable with it. I know a lot of classes have like a badge system as a reward system built into their classroom for, um, you know, technology challenges. Mm -hmm. So that might be an option for you. Like yep. if, you, if you can do this, you get, you're in this badge and it tends to work out as a decent reward system, just, but there's nothing typically attached to the badges. They're just badges they earn. So it's pretty cool. So word of advice that comes from many teachers around the world who have already gone through this, expect things are going to go wrong. Oh, yes. Oh, there, it's one of those things. Your network might be down. There might be that one computer that just doesn't connect. Expect these things are going to happen and know that it's normal that they happen and it happens to everybody. Yeah, you definitely need to have a backup plan in place for those students or you may kind of go, OK, if three of my students can't get on right now, maybe we leave this for another day. I had yeah. to do that for my first time uh, pulling out the iPads and all getting all 22 of my students on their iPads. Two of the students could not log on. It was just not working that way. And to be honest with you, when they can't log on at a certain age, tears start to flow. And yep. it's got nothing to do with what you've done. It's simply because at the time, all their fellow classmates were on and exploring the iPad and they couldn't. And so yeah. for the sake of emotional distress, we pulled all 22 iPads back and explained why. And all the other 20 students who could get on totally understood and we're totally welcoming to the idea of trying it out on a different day so because i explained about the fairness of it so that tended to work out well so be ready for to kind of pull it back and have, a, have an alternate plan in place because technology is technology it will make mistakes absolutely kind of going along that have somebody in the class that's going to be your tech geek or your tech guru or whatever title you want to give them Another student, basically, who is a little bit more comfortable with technology and is willing to help out. Yeah. In general, grow your student leaders. Grow yeah. your students that who seem to have a natural knack for it and will pick things up quicker and just let them go. Let them have, let them help others out. That's going to save you so much time and so much miss, 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 sir, 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 sir. It's going to save you a lot of that. And that oh, yes. That's frustration. That, uh, Which kind of brings up to the... Be very open with your kids about what you do know and what you do not know. You oh, yeah. do not need to know every button on every application that you're going to be using. And you know what? Let them figure stuff out. Even if you do know, don't tell them right away. Let them explore, figure it out, ask some friends, and then come engage with you. Starkly. In so, fact, some of these um, apps and programs have really good help built into them. Oh, yeah. I know I've been using a program called flat.io with my students. And in their help section, it's not just words explaining your steps to do something. They have a little mini video taking you through the series of clicks that you need to do. It's perfect for my nine year olds. Mini videos are far, can be far more accessible to a lot of students simply because of the engagement level with it. So bear that in mind. If you want, if you, they need, if you know, need, you know you're going to need to explain something. Try a video on it first. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot, and trust me, there's a lot of teachers out there, technology teachers, co technology coaches especially, that have channels on YouTube to explain stuff that I guarantee you'll need to know. Yes. So try that out. And start small. Yes. Step like, by step. It could be something where in your first semester of doing this, whenever that may be, like it might actually be the second semester of the year, but... When you decide to start to incorporate technology into your classes, then you start small. Maybe all you're doing is uploading PDFs to your LMS system, which would be a Moodle or a Schoology or a class website. And maybe that's all you do for that entire semester. Yeah. That's totally okay. 
And then in the following semester, you might add one more thing on. So maybe you're do- uploading PDFs, but then you've also decided that you're going to use Google Forms to give a quiz. Exactly. And I mean, take it step by step, but also don't be afraid. Uh, one of the things I've noticed most is that when teachers who are reluctant to adopt technology think about it, they tend to shy away from it, not to try things. They don't want to mess things up. They don't want to, quote unquote, break the computer. It's really hard to break the computer just by making a little mistake. That's so, true. Easier if you drop it. Yeah. So if you're one of those teachers, try it anyway. Have, have, the, have the gusto. Give it your 110%. Insert American football analogy here. Um, <laughs> to give it, you know, the old college try and play with it, figure it out. If you're telling the kids to, you should too. Absolutely. And you know what? One of the things that I have found is really good for creating a good relationship with your students is to be in the trenches with them and to basically say, I'm learning this alongside you. And look, I've just made a mistake too. I've just messed up. Who can help me out? Project it. Or let them project as well. Yeah. Um, if you were on an Apple TV system, which a lot of schools are these days, it's really easy. And one, I guess one big final point that we really want to make sure it comes across is don't be stubborn in terms of asking other teachers for help. No. Don't feel like you're less of a person or less of a teacher by engaging your colleagues and your tech coach. They're there, like, People will gladly help out. And if for some reason you really don't want to do that within your school, there are a lot of support areas that you can find online. Yeah, Twitter. And if you go on and say, I'm a noob at this and I'm trying to, you will have lots of people say, hey, welcome. This is awesome. This is, here's how you can solve that particular problem. Yeah, throw it out to Facebook. Get on Twitter. Trust me, Twitter is full. And I mean full of tech coaches. Like, yeah. It seems to be the place of choice for social media for tech coaches. There's also a couple of very active Google Plus groups. Yes, there are. Instagram has some, and I find there's not as much, but Instagram does have some. But throw it out to Facebook. If you have friends on Facebook, say, hey, I'm looking for someone who can give me a hand with this. Are you that person or do you know someone? And tap into social media. It works. It really does. All right. Well, good luck. Have and fun. And hope that you are able to go from step one to step two in your journey of technology and your students. Absolutely. Enjoy your day, everyone. Bye. Bye.